praise the Lord from Pastor Strader at Lighthouse Church. Thanks for connecting with us through our podcast. Our prayer is that it's a blessing to you as we try to reach, equip, and mobilize Jesus' name disciples in Apache Junction, Arizona, and the surrounding region. Enjoy today's podcast and come back often. God bless you. We love you. Come on, can you lift your hands and your voices to the Lord for a few moments tonight? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We magnify you. We glorify you. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we ask that the nine gifts of the Spirit would be activated and loosed in the house of the Lord. God, let not the gifts of the Spirit be for a select few, but may they be for the entire body of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we ask for an activation of the gifts of the Spirit of the Lord. Lord Jesus, for the entire church. Hallelujah, we give you praise and we give you glory in the name of the Lord. Can we shout amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a few moments. I want to say thank you, amen, to Pastor and Sister Strader for their tremendous hospitality that they have expressed and displayed unto my wife and I. We have absolutely had such a tremendous time of fellowship and also in worship unto the Lord together with each and every one of you. And I thank God for the pastoral leadership and the visionary leadership of this church. Amen. And your pastor in the name of Jesus. I give honor to them in the name of the Lord. Can we say amen? Amen. I also give honor to one of my best friends on the planet, Brother Del- Pastor Delman Sansom. Amen. Amen. I love you. I love you in the Lord, but I love you as a friend, brother. Just love you as a person. Thank God for brother and sister Sansom. Amen. And amen. They're wonderful children. Amen. Young people. Amen. Children would be a, a horrible thing to say only about them. Amen. Tremendous young man and woman of God. Amen. That were an awesome blessing to the kingdom of God in Bangladesh a few months ago. Amen. You heard about 136 receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Brother Shay and Sister Rihanna were a part of that, and they were a vital part of that, and we thank God for them. Can we say amen? The awesome reality is, is the future of the church is great. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. In young people's hands like these young people, we are so honored to have them with us tonight. Pastor Hughes, Sister Hughes, we honor you in the name of the Lord. I truly mean that with all of my heart. What a privilege and an honor to meet you. Love your spirit in the name of the Lord. And I thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost that we feel in this place. I feel very strongly tonight that uh, while last night we took some time to lay some foundational principles concerning or basically the launching pad concerning the gifts of the Spirit, I do feel a very clear direction as we speak about the gifts of the Spirit tonight. And it is, this is not going to be instructional only, but it is going to be demonstrable as well. And I have not asked the Lord that the Lord would allow me to operate in all nine gifts of the Spirit tonight. But I have asked the Lord to endow you with the gifts of the Spirit of the living God and that the gifts of the Spirit would be activated in your spirit so that you can understand that the gifts are not for a moment, but they are for a lifetime. And that God wants to use you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And it is true, just like any preacher, or pastor, or teacher, or minister of the word of God, that when you say your last amen for that night, you walk away with th- thoughts in your mind thinking, well, I, we could have talked about that. And there were 
two things that came to my mind. I was ate up by the Spirit of God last night, amen, in the room. I'm dealing with jet lag. I'm up at four in the morning. But the way my brain works, amen, is as soon as I'm awake, I'm thinking of the gifts of the Spirit. And there's an assignment that God has given us that must be fulfilled. And we talked about last night the gifts of faith. I'm going to go backwards a little bit so that we can really move forward quickly. And that is we talked about the gift of faith or, or sorry, the word of knowledge. Amen. And we learned that the word of wisdom is the reins that gives us an understanding when to apply or utilize or vocalize a word of knowledge. Can we say amen? The first gift that the Apostle Paul talks about is the word of wisdom. I believe it is the word gift, uh, word of wisdom. And then he t- mentions the word of knowledge. Remember, knowledge is a spiritual understanding that comes from God concerning any particular subject. And remember we talked about last night and we talked about not to relegate the gift uh, uh, or the word of knowledge to only the spiritual sphere. Because God is interested in your spirit and he's interested in your person. And he will bless you in your spirit, but he will bless you in your person. Can we say amen? In other words, he'll take care of everything that pertains to you. He's as interested in blessing everything that is pertaining to you as he is to your spirit. The Bible teaches us, and I'm paraphrasing, that God says that he desires that we would prosper even as our spirit prospers. And so he's holistic, amen. He's, he, uh, and so the word of knowledge, amen, God gives us a specific word. And I'm going to give you a quick example. God gives us a specific word. However, a specific word from God on any given subject can be devastating if it is not utilized within the framework of the word of wisdom. Because wisdom is the reins almost like a horse and chariot. The chariot is the word of knowledge. It's what's carrying the glory and it's carrying the dimension of what God wants to do for a particular person. But the reins of the horse is the word of wisdom. It's, it's, it's having a spiritual understanding to know when to release a word of knowledge. Can we say amen? amen. Now, I, I will give you a quick example really quickly as we move forward. And there, were, there was a word of knowledge that came forth Sunday morning in the altar and Sunday night. Amen. And the word of wisdom was in play as well. Uh, And if I can just, I'm going to give you a clear testimony, clear understanding of exactly what I am talking about. And so please ignore the personage of James Corbin and place yourself in that exact spot because God wants to use you in this exact dimension as well. While I was standing on the pulpit, I watched Brother Geronimo come to the front. Do I have the liberty to share that? And I think I, I, I think it would be a great example. Amen. Brother Geronimo came. Brother Terry Jerry uh, has uh, brought Brother Geronimo. We're believing God that God has transformed Brother Geronimo. Can we say amen? amen. He got baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. While he's coming up out of the water, he was saying something's going on in my throat. Can we say amen? Which, that's, that's tongues trying to come up, amen. If not already came up, we will verify that later. And as I stepped off the pulpit Sunday morning, and as I came to him, the Spirit of the Lord immediately spoke to me. And the Lord said, he feels that he is not worthy to be healed. 
And so when I laid my hands on Brother Geronimo, I said, Brother, you feel that you are not worthy to be healed, but you are not healed by God according to your worthiness. You are healed by God. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You are healed by God because you call on the name of Jesus Christ. And it stunned him, amen. And 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 so Sunday night, uh, he and the Lord touched him Sunday morning. But Sunday night, I told him at lunch, I said, brother, I didn't know his name, I knew it Sunday night. I said, brother, please come back because God is going to heal you of four-stage cancer in the name of Jesus tonight. I felt that word in my spirit, which what is that? That's a prophetic word, but it is also the word of knowledge. God will talk to you about what a person is facing, and he'll say to you, I'm about to do this in this situation for that individual. Can we say amen? So when I laid hands on him, there are two things that was pulsating in my spirit. Number one, you are worthy because of the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? And the second thing is, God is going to heal you tonight. Make yourself, force yourself to change your language. And instead of saying God is able to heal you, begin to say God is good going to heal you tonight. Some say, well, what if I'm a liar? Listen, let God be truth and every man a liar. And every man a liar, whatever. It, he's on the hook for his word. Can we say amen? So God, I, I, and, I, and I don't, I'm not just speaking willy-nilly, you know, to Brother Geronimo. I felt an unction of the Holy Ghost, and God was telling me, I'm going to heal him of this cancer. And so when I laid hands on him Sunday morning, this is the way it works with me. This is very practical teaching right now. Sometimes God, sometimes I pray for people to be healed, and I'll be honest with you, it's just, oh God, touch them in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would heal them in Jesus' name. I wish that I could tell you I felt fire come out of my fingertips. But I didn't. There are some times where I can feel electricity in my hands almost because of the Spirit of God. Amen. But I don't look at that as, as a sign that that's the only way and only time that God can move. Can we say amen? And Because uh, you can't trust your feelings. Can we say amen? Well, I'm not real. I feel like the Lord is going to do it. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things and all else who can know it. So you can't trust your feelings. That's a revelation right there. Can I say that again? You can write this in your notebook. You cannot trust your feelings. Well, I didn't really feel like God did anything great last night, but someone walked out and they'll come back the next service saying, I had a tumor the size of a golf ball. It disappeared last night. You may have not shouted the paint off the walls when you prayed for them, but you just spoke boldly in the name of Jesus and said, healing is yours in the name of Jesus. Go and be whole in the name of the Lord. And God caused a tumor the size of a golf ball to disappear. So I'm going quickly. So what I saw when I laid hands on Brother Geronimo, I literally saw in my spirit cancerous cells beginning to move around. Some say, well, are you really sure? Listen, I'm not here to qualify what I see in the Holy Ghost and my walk with God. Amen. Can we say amen? I got out of that business a long time ago. Because if you're busy qualifying your, you know, everything that you say, you're going to miss the voice of God. Because you're busy speaking in someone else's ear to validate your own self. 
So stop qualifying. So I'm laying hands on Brother Geronimo and I could see cancerous cells. I see like a patch of cells and I could see them to start to move. And so I begin to say literally, if you were nearby, I begin to say, I speak to those cancerous cells right now and I command you to respond to the voice of Jesus Christ. I command every cancerous cell in this body to begin to move and respond to the voice of Jesus and I command a reversal and these cells to be healed in the name of Jesus. So Sunday night rolls around and Brother Geronimo comes to the altar and and the Holy Ghost is moving on him. We're praying for his healing and he leans over to me and he says, Brother, Pastor, who told you that I was ashamed? He said, I I didn't feel worthy. Who told you that? He said, because I was up here feeling unworthy, and so I was simply praying, God, you heal everybody else because he felt unworthy. I said, brother, let me tell you. He said, I've only told one person, and that is Brother Terry. I think Jerry, sorry. I'm giving him a new name, Terry. Amen. Jerry, Terry, same but different. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know your dad so well. Love him. Amen. So I'm going to get blasted later. Amen. Probably. Amen. But anyways, he said, I only, I've only told one person this. I said, brother, the Holy Ghost told me this. When I laid hands on you, the Holy Ghost told me that you feel unworthy to be healed. And tears began to flow down his face. And I said, brother, let me give you a confirmation. If God would speak to me from the pulpit that you feel unworthy to be healed, then the other word that was given to you that he has healed you of cancer is just as valid as the first word. And what did it lead to? You want to talk about the importance of the gift of the Spirit? And you want to talk about the word of knowledge being reined in by the word of wisdom? Amen. And controlled by the word of wisdom? What does it lead to? Brother Geronimo was baptized Sunday night in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of his sins. I think he's planning on moving down here and I think from what I understand, he wants to make this his home church. I said, Brother Geronimo, from this night on, your not your life has took a turn. Amen. This is the this is going to be of the best part of your life. So the importance of the gifts of the Spirit, when you listen to the voice of God, instead of just saying, Well, I felt something, so I'm just going to unwisely shout it out. No, no. That was not the time to tell everybody from the pulpit, Brother Geronimo feels unworthy. Call him out from the pulpit saying, I feel the spirit of unworthiness. No, walk up to him. Speak in his ear and say, bro, you are worthy because of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. And by the way, here's a secondary teaching. Amen. When you're praying for people, it'd be a wonderful thing, even if they're not a part of the church, is if you'd speak to them like they were. I call people brother. Can we say amen? Had a flat tire this morning. AAA came out. Guy aired my tire up. I call him brother. Can we say amen? Why? Because I want to get him in the water in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so the gifts of the Spirit, when they are working in in the controlling of the Spirit of God, they can bring about salvation. Can we say amen? So let's move quickly in the name of the Lord. And so what was the word of knowledge for Brother Geronimo? The word of knowledge was he's dealing with an issue of feeling unworthy, but God makes him worthy because of his name. And the word of knowledge was that he would also heal him of four-stage cancer. Can we say amen? 
So the gifts of power and demonstration. We're going to go quickly tonight. We're drinking quick from a fire hose in the name of Jesus. Remember three classification of gifts. Gifts of knowledge. The first three gifts are gifts of knowledge. And I want to address this just for about 30 seconds discerning of spirits. Men, how many times have your wives told you, you better watch that one. The discerning of spirits does not only help us to delineate or judge between the spirit of God, the spirit of man, or a demonic spirit. It also helps us to understand the intent of all of these. Can we say amen? So discerning of spirits just to be able to say that's human, that's God, that's a devil, that's not the whole ball game here. It also is to give us an understanding of the intent of these three elements. Can we say amen? Heavenly, earthly, hellish. Amen? And so men, many of times your wives have told you, you better be careful. You better watch this, or vice versa. There is a, we, the, the world calls it a sixth sense. The world always tries to mimic what God is, really has going on. And so they don't want to put on it discerning of spirits, so they say sixth sense, amen, sixth sense or whatever. And uh, so we, you, you, you get a feeling sometimes around somebody. How many have felt that? Can you be honest? That he don't look like a creep, but his spirit says he is. Amen, amen, amen. I know I didn't let my baby boy get up and he didn't want to get up in Santa Claus's lap. Can we say amen? And I had no problem with him getting up in a stranger's lap, not getting up in a stranger's lap that has a fake beard and dresses in a red suit. Can we say amen? So what I am saying is, is, amen, the discerning of spirits. You know, it's so important. One time, Stephen was just seven months old. We were in a, a home in Bangladesh. Into the home walks an individual that does not reside there. The moment my son, who is seven months old at the time, lays his eyes on the individual, he begins to scream in horror. What did he identify? Can I tell you? Because as an adult, I could identify it as well. Amen. What he identified was a demonic presence either in the person or upon the person. Can we say amen? Amen. So pay attention, mom and dad, to your kids. Because we are created in the image of Jesus Christ. We're created in the image of God, which means that there are God characteristics in the sense that there are some certain things in us, feelings, emotions that are in us as a child, amen, that come from God. Can we say amen? And part of it is the discerning of spirits. So let's go quickly. Gifts of power and demonstration. Faith, the gifts of healing, and the working of miracles. I'm only going to touch these briefly. Amen. Faith, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1 through 11, but in particular verse number 9. To another by the same spirit, Amen, amen. It says, to another the gifts of healing uh, by this, uh, sorry, to another faith by the same spirit. Now, faith comes from the word pistis, and it means a persuasion. It's not a hope. We, we, are, we believe that faith in God is a hope in God. No, faith, biblical faith in God is a, I am persuaded that God will show up, amen, and he'll show his glory. Can we say amen? If I'm in need of prayer, please don't come to me with a hope, but come to me with a persuasion, a pistis faith, amen, that says I'm going to lay my hands on you and the power of God is going to flow and God's going to raise you up and heal every disease in your body. That's the gift of faith. Can we say amen? The gift of faith is a supernatural endowment of faith from the Lord Jesus Christ accessing the miraculous. 
Now, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, and the Bible says, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So the basic fundamental understanding here is that every individual has been blessed with a measure of faith from God. Can we say amen? But let me upset you for a while, and, I, and, and, and it'll help you. The measure of faith that God has given us is a measure of faith that brings us to an altar of repentance and causes us to rely upon him for salvation. And it goes beyond that. But its initial origin or purpose is that our eyes would be fixated on Christ Jesus us instead of the world that we would have a confidence amen that measure of faith in Romans is connecting us to Jesus Christ but the gift of faith is additional dimension to the measure of faith it isn't separate it's just the next step can we say amen where God says, if, if you'll let me give you the gift of faith, amen, then that gift of faith allows your faith that is in measure to increase to the point where you would say, according to the word of God, there's nothing impossible for God. Amen. Can we say amen? The gift of faith is oftentimes used by the Lord through the preaching of the word of God to encourage and increase the faith of those in need of a miracle. How many have been in a service, and I'm going very quickly through these because there's a purpose for this. How many have been through a, in a service, our, our, the, the, your pastor is preaching, and we have several pastors here and different people from different congregations, but the man of God is preaching and ministering the word of God, and you feel a relief in your spirit come. God is increasing your faith. He's, he's increasing and he's strengthening you and he is encouraging you. That's a faith that helps you walk with God. But the gift of faith is not just a walking with God faith, but it is a, it is a faith, it is a gift of faith that allows you to open your mouth and boldly proclaim God can do what is needed for the hour. So the gift of faith is oftentimes considered a proclaiming gift. Can we say amen? I'm going to say that again. The gift of faith that we're talking about and Paul was writing about here is, is considered a proclaiming gift. Now with the gift of faith, you don't need, you don't need to worry about is am I in the reins of the word of wisdom because faith, the gift of faith is given for you to vocalize what God has put in your spirit. And so I feel, I feel that in my spirit right now. Hallelujah. Where, where God is saying now, I'm giving you this. I've spoken this into your spirit and so if you would just begin to proclaim to whoever you can get a hold of tell them what I'm telling you can we say amen is what God is saying to us now how do we know that we're operating in the gift of faith well I'm glad you asked amen and 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 the the, uh, the gift of faith it, it it's this understanding that it does not matter what the situation is God is greater and he's bigger than the situation now that's not enough that's, that's wonderful, but it's not enough because the gift of faith is extremely distinct. Amen. It leads you to a place where you literally begin to say either for everything or for whatever thing God has spoken into your spirit about where you stand in front of yourself or other individuals and you begin to proclaim, I believe in the power of the name 
name of Jesus to heal you of this sickness. And you begin to say things like this. Here's how you know the gift of faith is in operation. You begin to say, today is your day for a miracle. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. God's going to heal your body today. But you don't know my situation. I don't need to know your situation. When I say I, I hope I'm speaking from all of us. We don't need to know the situation. When the gift of faith is in operation within us, we can say under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God's got this, honey, and you're going to make it in the name of Jesus. Today is your day to be healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? It is an incredible confidence, not in your power. Can we say amen? Amen. But in the power of the name of Jesus. Here's the gift of faith in action. Acts chapter 3, verse number 1 through 10. Peter and John are going into the temple at the hour of prayer. And there's a lame man laying by the wayside or by the gateway. Amen. Begging alms. Amen. And so the Bible says, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple at Asked in alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Peter had the gift of faith. There is no doubt about it. Amen. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Notice he didn't say, I got the gift of faith, so if you'll stand on your two feet and you'll, or you'll kneel, I'll lay my hands on you and the power of God will flow. No, it, it just, there was already a flow. Amen. Amen. Because of the confidence in the ability of God. through the gift of faith to do a miracle. Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. Can we say amen? amen? And you know the rest of the story. Amen. That's the gift of faith in action. Now, here's where we have a great biblical understanding. What does James say? Faith without works is dead. So the apostle here uses the gift of faith, but he also uses the working of faith and works. What was works? He grabs him by the hand, I believe it is. The Bible says, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. He didn't just say the power of God can heal you, but he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. And he grabs him by the right hand and pulls him up. And the Bible says, thank you, Brother Vanderhoff. The Bible says that he goes into the temple leaping and praising God. Can we say amen? Or he's healed. We, we know he's healed at this moment. So faith, the gift of faith is a proclaiming gift. And it is a gift of action. Can we say amen? Well, I believe one day God will heal you. That's not the gift of faith. That's probably the gift of doubt. Can we say, oh me? But the gift of faith says God's got this, baby. God's going to do this right now. Where you got pain, where you hurting, let's pray right now. Lay your hands on that spot right now. You tell them. Or you're laying hands if it's appropriate on where they're hurting. You say in the name of Jesus, I command this to flee from your body in the name of Jesus. And then you begin to never just pray without thanksgiving. Amen. And then you begin to say, Lord, I thank you for healing sister so-and-so of a tumor in the name of Jesus. I rejoice in the power of God because it is done. The gift of faith is not just faith for one particular believer, but it's purpose to be used in the increase, to, to increase the faith of others and help connect them to the miraculous power of God. So what is the gift of faith? It's a bridge builder. 
the gift of faith. So imagine that you have the gift of faith. God speaks into your spirit, sister, and you begin to proclaim that you feel in the name of Jesus that God is going to heal someone and you're praying for them, amen. And so what's happening there? Because she spoke from the gift of faith and it was heard in their ears. There was a connection in their heart from her mouth, what was coming out of her mouth to the power of God. So faith, the gift of faith is a proclaiming gift and it is also a bridge building gift. Gift of healing. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number one through 11. Now here's the thing, some will say, but I kind of feel really weird if I've never said something like this before because what if it's not God? How about we just let these four walls be a safe wall? Safety net. Can we say amen? Can I, here, let me help you with this. You are not always going to be 100% right. So let's eliminate this thought that says, well, if I'm not 100% right, then I'm a liar. The devil is a liar. You're a person of faith. So has, has God healed everybody I prayed for? Absolutely not. But he certainly has healed about 90% of them. Can we say amen? And there are some people that had death sentences on their heads that are alive and well because of the gift of faith and a proclamation of the ability of Jesus Christ to reverse the curse in the name of Jesus and heal them in the name of the Lord. So stop worrying about if you're right or not because that actually becomes a sense of, in a way, self-idolatry because you get tripped up into this mindset that says, man, if I ain't perfect all the time, there's only one perfect one and his name is Jesus. And the last time I checked, you and I ain't Jesus. Amen, amen. Can we say amen? He's a perfect one. We are not. And so I'm not worried about am I missing the mark? What I'm worrying about, am I listening to his voice? And there's a practice of hearing the voice of God. Gifts of healing, let's go on. So tonight there's going to be a demonstration. The Holy Ghost is here, but the Holy Ghost is going to move in specifically the dimension of these gifts that we're speaking about tonight. And as you lay hands on somebody, God's going to give you a word of knowledge. Now if you really feel like you're not really sure about it, that's your moment to beeline it to pastor. Can we say amen? And say, Pastor, I feel this. What do you think if, am I right? And he's going to love you as a shepherd. And if you're wrong, he'll help you. Can we say amen? amen? So we are in a safe zone where we can, can I say it like this? Experiment. I know that sounds so unchurchy. Can we say Amen experiment with being used in the gifts and what it feels like. Can we say amen? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Gifts of healing. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. We touched on this last night. Notice gifts is plural. So what does that mean? I believe with all of my heart that if it said the gift of healing, then it would be a Band-Aid gift that would cover every sickness on the planet. But when we see the gifts of healing, and it doesn't say the gifts of working of miracles. It says gift of working of miracles. But here it says gifts of healing. So what does that mean? Could it be that God has given specific individuals gifts of healing to see somebody dealing with one particular disease healed in the name of Jesus? Notice I'm asking the question. I'm not standing as Albert Einstein, amen, and saying this is that, amen. But I can tell you that if it's gifts and the Bible doesn't make a mistake, that means there are multiple aspects of these gifts. Can we say amen? 
I'm reading a tremendous book right now. It's, it's, uh, in some points, they're not doctrinally sound, but when you read books that are not written by apostolic doctrines, think of it like a smorgasbord or a buffet. You pick up what you like, and you pick up what is right, and you cast out what is wrong. Can we say amen? So I'm not going to toss the book out because the guy wrote something in the beginning of the book that was doctrinally incorrect because his main subject that he's dealing with is the gifts of the Spirit and in particular the gift of faith, the word of knowledge, and the, uh, and the gifts of healing. Can we say amen? Tremendous book, amen. And so he's writing the same saying that there are individuals that have an anointing upon their lives and God has gifted them with gifts of healing for particular diseases, deafness, blindness, cancer, diabetes, amen. Personally, a gifts of healing that God has given unto me is, uh, is, is attacking the disease of diabetes and cancer and so on. Can we say amen? Amen. And so I can tell you that that is true. Amen. The Bible says in Mark 16, verse 14 through 20, verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. That's extremely optional. Can we say amen? Amen, 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 amen. And if they drink any, any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, I don't know if it's the will of God for the gifts of healing to take place. Then you must take Mark chapter 16 and shred it out of your Bible. Amen. Because Jesus said, you'll lay hands on the sick. He didn't say the preachers are the incredible gifted only, but he said believers would lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The purpose of this statement is for us to understand that anomaly type of world that we've been living in in the past that says only the preacher can be used by God in the gifts of the Spirit is counted to the word of God. And what God wants to do is equip an army of believers that don't just stand behind the pulpit, but they sit in the pew and they walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. They prophesy. They have words of knowledge and wisdom and, and gifts of healing where they can operate not as a preacher that has been ordained by a body. And I'm not against that. Amen. I love love that and appreciate that but it's time in the kingdom of God where the entire body walks in the gifts of the spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost it's that timing that we were talking about brother that dimension that we were talking about outside amen that era amen that God has brought us into whenever you stand upon and believe the word of God and proclaim healing to those sick and deliverance to the bound you are proclaiming the will of the Lord you are proclaiming what God has already established in his word I don't know if it's the will of God for them to be healed. How about try? Can we say amen? And not try with your eyes open saying, well, he do it. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo, amen. Throw the marble in the roulette wheel. Can we say amen and give it a whirl? Amen. Not that I've had experience. Can we say amen? I have not had experience. Can we say amen? But we have that kind of mindset. Let's just see. Let's, let's see where it's all going to fall. No, 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 no. If you feel that God has given you the gifts of healing, and, and I, I'm speaking to that spark, that seed inside of you, you feeling it right now, matter of fact. Some of you, while I've been teaching, you've been thinking, is that what I'm feeling? Is that what I've been kind of feeling and experiencing? I speak to that to come to life in the name of Jesus. And I say, yes, it is in the name of the Lord. You are not proclaiming words of your own accord. And so here's the established word of God. Remember, all gifts filter is the word of God. Can we say amen? 
Not going to repeat that too much. That was established yesterday. Every gift of the Spirit is filtered through the Word of God. So if you have a question, take it to the Word of God. How do I know if it's the will of God for them to be healed? Mark chapter 16, I'm glad you asked. Amen. Says it, amen. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus gives us examples. He healed them all. Now, does everybody get healed? No, not on this life does everybody get healed. But they will get healed if they're walking in faith on the other side. Can we say amen? But I don't want to wait for the other side. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? So we're praying healing now. Amen. On and on and on. There are examples of gifts of healing. So I'm going quickly through the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1 through 11. The working of miracles. Now what you're going to commonly see in the gifts of the spirit is all nine gifts, they orbit Amen. Jesus Christ and his word together. In other words, they oftentimes will all be active in the same service. They oftentimes tag with another gift. Now, we're, we're talking about gifts as if they're a person. I hope you understand the contextualization of that. Gifts are not persons, amen. But the gift of faith con- connects with the word of knowledge uh, and then the working of miracles and healing and, and so on. And so the working of miracles, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1 through 11, in particular, verse number 10, to another the working of miracles. To another, the working of miracles. So what is a miracle? What is a miracle? Let us be clear. A healing is not always a miracle. So what is a miracle? So regarding the flesh of man or a malady or deformity or something like that, and you're praying for somebody, they're missing fingers, they're, they're, they're blind, they, they don't have an eye in an eye socket, or, or they're, 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 uh, uh, they're the leg, they were born, the leg short or whatever, you begin to pray that. God would give them a new eye, can we say amen, or God would cause fingers to grow, uh, amen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that where there was no ear, that there would be an ear in the name of Jesus. That is a creative miracle by God. It's not just a healing, even though it is regarding the flesh of man, but a miracle regarding human bodies uh, is amen a creative miracle of God can we say amen now let me give you an example of that there was a young man uh, brother Mike Easter's uh, son or grandson I think son was in Bangladesh on a crusade team and he literally said I come to this crusade because I've wanted to see God do a miracle. I've never seen God do a miracle with my own eyes. Now, he's heard and saw people healed, but never saw it with him laying hands on somebody, and God performed a miracle. And so somebody came to him that was missing an entire ear canal. Amen. There was a lobe of some sort there, but there was no hole. There was no ear canal. And so he's just a young man. He placed his hands on the side of the head where the ears would be. And he said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command an ear to come forth. I command healing. I command this in the name of Jesus Christ. When he removed his hand where there was no ear canal, where there was no hole. There was now a hole and a fully developed ear. That is a miracle. Can we say amen? It's a creative miracle of God that he does all the time. Can we say amen? And uh, another example is, is uh, I, I, I'm trying to think, uh, there, are, there have been times in Bangladesh, and, uh, amen, where we have, we're reaching out to, uh, I'll share one with you, matter of fact, in particular, we are reaching out to a predominantly Hindu group of people, we're on the riverside, and their village was at the riverside, and there was a ferocious storm that was coming. 
from the other side of the river. The river was about maximum 65 feet across. And because of their superstition, we realized that if that rain came while we were teaching them the plan of salvation, that would be an omen to them from their false demonic gods, little g gods, that they were not to respond to the word of the true living God. And so Pastor Peter Bishash, who Brother Shea and Sister Rihanna know, amen, we stood on the brinks of the river on this side where the people were. We lifted our hands to the sky and to those clouds. And we said, in the name of Jesus, we command those clouds that they cannot come across this river in Jesus' name. Man, they kept a coming. But they stopped right on the edge of the river on the other side. It was a deluge on that side, but bright and sunshiny on this side. It could not cross the river because God had heard the prayers of his people and he caused a miracle to take place. Amen. That, that, that is a, that is, that it happens on a regular basis. Amen. Hallelujah. We just had a crusade in North Bengal. It was raining ferociously and we began to pray. And as we drove up to the crusade grounds, a one mile before we even got to the crusade grounds, it was not raining. So we could have the crusade. 6,500 received the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is that? That's a miracle. That is a miracle. Can we say amen? Jesus feeds the thousands with five loaves and two fishes, multiplies it, 12 baskets full remaining. And we're not even counting the women in this. So a huge multitude are fed by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because of the miraculous power of God. So what does that mean? I'm going to tell you straightforward. God will give you power and authority even over the elements of the world sun stands still and it does hell stones fall on the army of the enemy and it does so the working of miracles amen is a gift of God amen that is not relegated only to human flesh but is relegated to everything in this world how many times have we heard people testify and say man the gas tank light was on and I had another hundred miles to go and I prayed in the name of Jesus and boom there went my gas gauge I made it home that's a miracle can we say amen It's an absolute miracle. And I want to say this as I move on. The miraculous is always dependent on the faith and the obedience of mankind. I'm going to say that again. The miraculous is always dependent on the faith and the obedience of mankind. So you can hear a word from God that he wants to give you power to cause a storm to cease or or something to happen, but you need to be obedient to what he said and vocalize that against those things. Can we say amen? God says, well, I give you power and authority to speak this and and it will happen and you just stand there not obeying the voice of God, then then it's going to roll right over you. Can we say, oh me or amen? And, And so we must be obedient and we must have faith and obedience unto the word of God, Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, and therefore we will see miracle signs and wonders, amen. There have been some miracles of finances taking place in the Arizona district, why? Because there are men and women of God that have faith in God and are being obedient to God and are standing and giving voice to the will of God, which is a prophetic word of God, which is a word of knowledge and a word a word of wisdom, gift of wisdom, amen, and what is happening? God is breaking the shackles of poverty off of the people in the Arizona district and the churches in Jesus' name. There will come a time where you will not feel as if you would compare to any other. Amen, amen. 
I know that sounds carnally based, but I hope you receive that because it's not meant to be. Amen. Amen. So I want to move quickly to the last group of gifts because God is about to demonstrate his desire for you to operate in these gifts. Remember this. If your integrity does not match the gifts, the gifts will kill you. So you cannot pray for gifts if you are not willing to pray more. I just want to see if this will really happen, what the preacher is saying. And so, let me pray for a gift of the Spirit of God. You better be careful what you ask for because God may give it. And this is a double-edged sword, honey. You cannot live carnal and then ask God, God, give me a gift. Y'all got quiet on the preacher right there. So all that other stuff was good up until commitment comes into play. I, can, I cannot live like the normal believer and expect the anointing of God to flow in my life and the gifts of the Spirit to be active in my life. I can't read as much Bible as you can. I got to read more Bible. I got to pray more. I got to fast more than the bare minimum. Amen. And each dimension that God takes you to is more cost. It becomes a bigger cross. Can we say amen? If you want a crossless relationship, then you're in the wrong church. Can we say amen? You can join the church of whatever, amen, for that sort of crossless relationship, amen. So for every, if we're praying, it's so important that you catch this. This is not out of line. It's in the vein of the Spirit of God, amen. When we pray for gifts, we must also say, now Jesus, as I'm asking for the gifts of the Spirit, to be activated in me tonight, I want you to know that I absolutely commit to you that I will pray like never before. I will fast like never before. Can we say amen? Oh, hallelujah. Can we say amen? Amen. In other words, you can't operate in the anointing and the gifts of spirit while still playing around with the world. We got plenty of harlotry prophets can we say amen you heard correctly that become prophets for profit amen because they got enamored with the applause of the result of the gift and their dedication didn't go deeper so let me say it like this minimalistic dedication equals minimalistic gifting gifts of speaking or gifts that are spoken out number one diverse kinds of tongues remember we talked about this yesterday so we're not going backwards amen amen we oftentimes have been taught or it is unspoken that when you got the holy ghost for the first time at the altar you got everything that god ever wants to give you that is absolutely a fallacy You got what you need to go to heaven. But there's a maturity that God wants to bring about. Remember, we talked about it. Faith to faith. What does that mean? Am I going from uh, uh, this doctrine to a new doctrine? No. It means that I'm going from a level of maturity where God's got me today to tomorrow to the next level. Deeper. More of God. Can we say amen? Amen. And so diverse kinds of tongues is so incredibly important here. And this church, you you have seen the gift of tongues, this gift that we're going to talk about for a few moments. Amen. This is a gift that has been prevalent in this body of believers. Diverse kinds of tongues. Amen. The Bible says... In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1 through 11, it says, um, amen, uh, uh, diverse to another, diverse kinds of tongues. So what does that mean? Amen. I'm going to be talking about prophecy first. I apologize. I'm going to, I got them. Here's where I told you yesterday that some of them I restructured and put them in a different order. And there's a purpose for it. Diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and then prophecy. But I want to address prophecy first. 
And then we'll get to diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation, and you'll exactly understand why. Because they are twins, and they go together. And I feel that they need to be covered sufficiently. Prophecy. So prophecy, even though it is not in in that, you know, it's not, it's, it's not chronological here. But let's talk about prophecy. To another prophecy. Prophecy. Let's demystify prophecy. And I'm passionate about this. Prophecy has four distinct definitions. I'm going quickly through them. Number one, it comes from a word prophetia, which means, amen, a foreteller. And get ready for this. It's going to upset your apple cart. An inspired or an anointed speaker. Oh, wow. It just got really simple just now. And I'm talking about Hebrew and Greek, what the words say here. There are four definitions of prophecy or four words of prophecy in the Bible. And this one right here means prophetia, means a foreteller or an inspired or anointed speaker that makes predictions concerning what God wants to do. Can we say amen? Another one that is found in the Old Testament prophecy comes from the word nibuah. Nibuah means a prediction or a spoken or written word. Another Old Testament word for prophecy is masa. Masa, get ready for this one because it's and it, it, it isn't what we make some amazing pork or chicken tamales out of. Can we say amen? But masa in the Old Testament is another word for prophecy. It means a burden, an utterance, something that is spoken from a burden from the Holy Ghost. Can we say amen? From the Lord. A mental desire. Here, Get ready, brother. Amen. This is for you. It also means a song and a prophecy. So there's a biblical understanding that even musicians, when they play, there can come the spirit and gift of prophecy out of a note played on the piano. You don't believe that? David is a classic example of that. Amen, amen. Not a word needs to be said. And by the way, when you have danced with the devil and when you understand the worldly music of today, because that was a sphere that I was in, amen, the rock scene, I was a singer. I have I had recorded some things and things like that. I thought I was going to be the next whatever in Los Angeles. Thank God God has a sense of humor and he stripped my head of everything that I thought would make me that, amen. Hallelujah. But I was in that scene. And so I can tell you right now that there is a distinct rhythm and there is a distinct sound that is not the sound of heaven in worship. Now, I'm not saying slap your hymnals out and let's all get to going on all fly away every Sunday. I love the old country gospel. I love all that. Grew up on the Rambos and all of that. Duck and uh, and Buck and Buck and Dottie. Can we say amen? Duck and Body. Amen. (laughs) You know, Gaither Trio from years ago. The old heart records. That's old school, y'all. You youngsters don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. It's the first time I've ever said that out of my life, in my mouth. You youngsters don't know what I'm talking about. Have I gotten old all of a sudden? Amen. Amen. But there is a rhythm and there is a beat. How do you know it? I was in that scene. You don't have any idea, some of y'all, about my testimony. But when I tell you God's good to me, he's delivered me from bondage. Set me free. Amen. Can we say amen? So, amen, there's a note that can be, there, there's a note that can be played that is the opposite. Can we say amen? So, amen, our musicians pray and intercede before God, I hope they do, where they're saying we're going to choose a song that is going to usher in the prophetic unction of the Spirit of God that creates an atmosphere where the gifts can run rampant in the church and God can do what he wants to do. Can we say amen? 
Amen. That's bonus teaching, by the way. Another prophetic definition for prophecy is nabe, which means a prophet or an inspired man or woman. Did you catch that? Doesn't sound too mystical, does it? Doesn't sound all complicated. What does it mean? What is prophecy? It is an anointed and inspired word of God that allows us to hear the voice of God and have the mind of God for the moment and for the future. Can we say amen? And he can oftentimes speak to us in the past. So let me go quickly. Prophecy takes place when an anointed man or woman of God who is able to see and predict the future and proclaims it through anointed preaching, proclaiming, singing, and writing, which oftentimes becomes a burden for the one prophesying. Now, somebody that operates in the gift of prophecy, that most of the time you will find them in tears. I find I, I, when the spirit of prophecy comes upon me, it, it, I, I'm, not, I'm not just prophesying a, you know, a, a glorious thing. There are some times where you feel the burden of a nation. You feel the burden of a people upon you. And you're saying, thus saith the Lord, un, and, and, unless we return to God, God's going to remove our candlestick from us. And by the way, if every voice of prophecy you ever hear is all sweet, you probably got connected connected to the wrong prophetic one because hell will prophesy just like God prophesies through his people prophecy is more than prognostication or just carnal predictions we got Nostradamus for that (laughs) prophecy is an insight into the spirit world which affects the physical world according to the will word and wisdom of the spirit of God (coughs) Prophecy will always remain centered on and around the word of God without contradicting the word of God. No prophetic word can be outside of this word. Let me give you a quick example. I know I'm, uh, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on time here, uh, and I, uh, this, the anointing of God is here. I thank God for that. There was a man that visited us in Bangladesh, came with a crusade team, not recently. He came back to America years, several years later. We met his wife, and this is what he said. She said, Pastor Corbin, when my husband was with you in Bangladesh, did he meet or spend time with another woman? I said, absolutely not. He was with us almost 24-7. But here's what happened. He came home to his wife. I won't tell you her name, where she is. Can we say amen? But he said to her that the Lord basically spoke to him and said that he was called to Asia and that, that this wife would not support him in the ministry in Asia. And so he was supposed to divorce her and get him an Asian wife. Missed the filter, didn't it? Someone comes to you and said, this is a word of prophecy unto you. Thus saith the Lord. And and you, you, listen, folks, I'm going to tell you straight up. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes up to me and says, thus saith the Lord, I'm going to hear what they're going to say. But in a moment of time, I'm going to run what's coming out of their lips through that word of God. And if it doesn't match up to the word of God, they better have Kevlar on. Because I am coming after them in the name of Jesus. And I will succeed in a whatever. Amen. I I mean it. Amen. Amen. And so prophecy always comes from the word of God. So here's how you know. Because there's a gift of prophecy in this house. There is a gift of prophecy in this house. Here's how you know that you all of a sudden you're praying and you feel an unction and you feel that God is showing you something. And it doesn't have to be, come on, let's not cookie cut this. Can we do that? Can we just not do that and say that, you know, if you don't see a vision in your spirit and God doesn't take you to the 85th heaven, amen, that it's not a vision from God. God speaks to me in visions that are only pictures. 
sometimes. And he gives me a picture in my mind. And then I say, God, what are you trying to say to me? And then he will say, I'm showing you this picture, this image in your mind, so that you would understand. Boom, 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 boom. This is what I'm about to do. Can we say amen? And even at that, even if it's James Corbin that God is speaking a prophetic word to or giving me a vision, I'm going to take that and I'm going to run it through this word. So remember yesterday, the devil will come as an angel of light. And so prophecy comes from the word of God. God will not give you a prophetic unction that doesn't match Genesis to Revelation. If you got it, then you need to pray through it. Because you're tuning your ear into another spirit. Now it's not always the devil. Sometimes it's just flesh. So, amen, prophecy is found in the word of, always based on the word of God. My notes are copious here, and I'm just skipping through them. There are multiple prophets in the Old Testament and New Testament, and can I say this, prophetesses. Come on, men, say amen. You cannot deny Deborah and all the other prophetesses in the word of God. So you you don't got a space, amen, to, 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 you know, flex your muscles here. Can we say amen? Amen. Amen. And so if there were prophets and prophetesses that are documented in the word of God, then should there not be prophets and prophetesses in the apostolic church of today? Woo, that was good teaching, amen. I need to buy the tape myself, amen. Sorry, that sounds carnal and prideful. Jesus, please forgive me. I hope he knows I I don't really mean it, amen. Amen, I I don't buy my stuff. Can we say amen? (laughs) Amen, I really don't, amen. Prophecy, and I apologize if that sounded prideful. I, I think you understood what I was trying to say. Prophecy will center around the Lord Jesus Christ and will always point or direct people to him. So if God's given you a word of prophecy, if that prophecy is self-exaltation and not Jesus' exaltation, it's probably flesh just speaking. And if you're not careful, you'll walk in that glory cloud so long that you'll assume it's got your name written all over it. And so, amen. So the word of prophecy always points people to Jesus. Always Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Always Jesus. All glory, all honor. It's what he wants. Hallelujah. How can we be closer to him? Throughout the word of God, it is clear that the purpose of prophecy was to, it's to these four things, illuminate and reveal the will of God for mankind, Encourage and lead a nation or a people to repentance. How many how many know that the prophets uh, had a word of repentance? Can we say amen? No, no, we don't, we don't want that. We want just sugar. Prophesy sugar. Prophesy lollipops. And a true prophet will prophesy repentance. And number, number three, to express the judgment of God upon a nation or a people group. And number four, to reveal the Lord Jesus Christ to mankind. Amen. There are so many messianic prophecies that were fulfilled in Jesus being born of Bethlehem of Judea in that manger, amen, that it would absolutely blow your mind. But those things were prophesied by prophets of old. Prophets were considered seers. They were those that can see in the spirit. Don't make it creepy and mystified. Can I say amen? I said creepy, yes, amen, in a Pentecostal apostolic church. Don't make it all mystified, amen, amen. You're walking in the Holy Ghost, and God gives you a spiritual understanding of a particular thing, and so you're speaking that out. You're giving voice to what God is showing you, to what he wants to do. It does doesn't have to be complicated. Can we say amen? It may start out with, I feel this. 
that the way God works in the kingdom of God is he will give you a sip before he gives you the whole cup because he wants to test you to see can your framework handle the whole glass. And so, therefore, as you feel tonight, because it's happening, and it's going to happen in just a few moments, as you feel the unction of the Spirit of God concerning particular gifts of the Spirit, amen, and you, you, you may not know how to vocalize that. So here's what you're going to need to do, amen. Go to pastor tonight while we're praying. If you're feeling something especially related to prophecy or so on, or the word of knowledge, and say, you know, pastor, I feel feel this what do you think about it can we say amen I know that's the second time I've said that because it's about to be released in the house of God and so at first it's going to feel strange at first it's going to feel really fleshly it's going to feel like you're going to say is this me but trust the spirit of the Lord it is not you God will not put a word in your spirit that is only for you all the time sometimes he'll tell you I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that in your life but tonight he I don't believe that God is going to be speaking only individually I believe he's going to be speaking corporately because he's teaching us corporately can we say amen so there are prophecies in the word of God that were fulfilled, amen, for the birth of Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to go through all of my notes because I want to cover these last two and we want to release the spirit of God to begin to demonstrate the gifts of the spirit in us and among us in the name of Jesus. Diverse kinds of tongues, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1 through 11. Now here's how we know you have a true word of prophecy. Get ready for this. It's going to blow your mind. It will come to pass. Can we say amen? amen? And that is according to scripture, by the way. So I'm not saying something outside of the word of God. The Bible teaches us that here's how we know that a word of prophecy is a true word of prophecy. It will come to pass. Can we say amen? amen. How do we test the, the word of prophecy? Remember, try the spirits. See whether they be from God. So let's reinterpret it like this. Try the gifts. Try what you're feeling. Try what you're thinking in your spirit in the Lord. Can we say amen? To see whether it's from God. And here's the filter how we test all the gifts. Do they give glory to God? And is there a word spoken to us that detracts away from the divinity of Jesus Christ? Can we say amen? Amen. That's how you try the spirits. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh is the spirit of the world or is a spirit of the devil. Can we say amen? And I'm reinterpreting that for our understanding of today. But I think you understand that. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1 through 11, the latter part of verse number 10, to another diverse kinds of tongues. What is diverse kinds of tongues? Diverse kinds of tongues is God's attempt to speak a specific message to us through the avenue of an unknown language or unknown to us tongue. Can we say amen? Now, how do we know that? I'm glad you asked. Because in the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse number 11 through 12, how do we know that God wants to speak to us in tongues? Diverse tongues. Here's the word. Isaiah 28, verse 11 through 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. And then you read the rest to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, the spirit of God, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. So this tongue, there. remember, there are, there, I believe there are two types of tongues. Three actually. There's the tongues that takes place when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're responding to the Spirit of God, filling you immediately by speaking in other tongues. Amen. It's the seal of the Spirit of God on you. 
That speaking in tongues is between you and God. It's a witness that the Spirit of God now dwells in you. Can we say amen? We're not going to minimalize that. That's important and necessary. Can we say amen? Absolutely necessary. But amen. But there is another tongue. The other sense of tongues or purpose of tongues is so that uh, that the Holy Ghost can pray through us and, and that we can pray to God in an unknown tongue. Don't be offended when somebody says to you like James Corbin might, let's all pray in tongues right now. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? Let's all lift our hands and begin to speak in tongues right now. Some say, well, you can't do that. The Spirit of God's got to do that. Listen, honey, I'm glad you said that because don't you have the Spirit of God living inside of you? And doesn't the Bible say that the Spirit prays through us in groanings and th- that we don't even understand? So when I don't know how to pray, I'm praying in tongues so that the Holy Ghost can pray through me. I can tell you right now, when the Holy Ghost prays through you, he will break prison bars. Can we say amen? And then there's the tongue, the third dimension of tongues, I guess we could say it that way, is God now trying to speak to us. Amen, amen. Can we say amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 21 says, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. So what does the Apostle Paul do for the Trent Church in Corinth and the church of today? He's quoting Isaiah 28. And he's saying, That that was prophesied by Isaiah, here's the practication of it or the application of it in the church world. Can we say amen? So God has a desire to speak to us in tongues. That's all wonderful. That's tremendous. And it is. Can we say amen? But but I need an interpretation. Because I know Bangla, and I know English, and I know some Spanish. Can we say amen? I could say Polly Vuvon said to the cows come home, but if you answer me the rest in French, I'm lost. Can we say amen? So I, I need to know what are you saying, God? What are you saying to me? And when you look at the book of Acts, in the book of Acts chapter 2, here's an indication of where God is directing us and what he's trying to teach us. If you just think about in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1 through 39, how many nationalities and languages were being spoken in the upper room? Some Hebronic scholars say there was 70 languages that were being spoken by individuals in the upper room room out of 120 people and these were languages that were known to man but not known to that man that was speaking it or that woman can we say amen hallelujah we have examples the the parthians the medes The Elamites, the dwellers in Mesopotamia, the dwellers in Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt in the parts of Libya and Cyrene, Rome, Jews in the proselytes, the Bible says, Cretes and Arabians. They heard them speak in other tongues, but the other tongues that they were speaking was their own languages. I'm not talking about the 120 zone languages. I'm talking about the spectator's languages. So what was being communicated? We really don't know because the translation isn't applied here. But I can imagine that what is being spoken is the glory of God. I, I, I'm going quickly with this. I uh, was traveling on deputation in the great district of Oklahoma and in a church I was preaching at that night or God led me to minister in at, had the privilege of doing so, I heard a man in the altar and as he was speaking in tongues, I listened to people. 
as he was speaking in other tongues. Amen. Now, I'm not the tongue police. Can we say amen? And by the way, if you are, would you cremate your badge? Somebody walking around. I got to hear. I gotta, let me, let me, everybody be quiet now. I got to hear this now. No, 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 no. Come on, folks. Can we say amen? Can we, can we just act right? Can we say amen? That's a condemning spirit that, you know, this isn't a club or anything like that. You can ask them nowadays, hey, man, when you were praying, did you hear some words come out of your mouth that were not your own language? Don't have to weird them out. Can we say amen? Amen, amen. And, and, and most of the time they'll say, yeah, man, I, I heard stuff coming out of my mouth, and the words and sounds, and I don't really know what they mean. Well, guess what? That's the Holy Ghost. Can we say amen? Some people are walking around saying people got the Holy Ghost because they are Holy Ghost police when there was not a tongue that was coming forth at all. So it might be better just to ask the person clearly. And so they heard them speak their own languages in tongues. But so anyways, this man in Oklahoma, as he's speaking in other tongues, I, I get him after service. And I said, bro, brother, you were speaking in tongues. A, you know, I, I heard you speak in tongues. Do you know what you were saying? No, sir, I didn't know what I was saying. I said, you kept saying over and over again the Arabic name for Jesus Christ. Now, there were other sounds that were coming out of his mouth, but then between those sounds would come Yeshua Mashiach, amen, amen, which is the Arabic pronunciation of Jesus. Can we say amen? He said, man, I thought so, amen. He said, I thought so. Early on in Bangladesh, and, and, and we're about to pray in just a moment, uh, 30 years ago when English and the in internet did not even exist, we didn't even have dial-up, honey. That's old school, by the way, too. Never thought that I would say dial-up was old school. We're getting old, Brother Sansom. I'm getting old, Sorry. And uh, remember, I remember praying for uh, people in the altar, a young little girl in Bangladesh. This was 30-plus years ago, 31 almost. Didn't know a lick of English, but was speaking in perfect English. Can we say amen? If you went to her after service, hey, honey, how you doing? I didn't know you know English. Say what? <laughs> She didn't know a lick of English. But when she was filled with the Holy Ghost, the tongue that God chose to be the evident uh, uh, of his spirit was the English language. So God at times desires to speak to us in tongues. So what do we need? Since we are on the other side of eternity and we are not, amen, uh, 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 as God, amen, uh, uh, we are finite. What is the word finite? He's infinite. And he, but we're finite humans. We need him to give us the ability to know the interpretation of the tongue that he is speaking to us in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? amen? And therefore to another the interpretation of tongues. I promise you this is going to be, it's going to be extremely, uh, extremely practical as we close. And I will not say that again. Can we say amen? So the Bible says to another the interpretation of tongues. I feel the liberty of the Holy Ghost right here. That's why I know something's about to break in the name of Jesus. To another the interpretation of tongues. Let's break those words down. down. Interpretation. What does it come from? comes from the word, the Aramaic, or the Greek or Aramaic word, hermaneu. And it means a translation or an interpretation. Tongues comes from the word glossa, which means language or tongue. From the beginning of the book of Acts, church, in Acts chapter 1 and 2, throughout the entire book of the Acts until today, the Lord at times spoke to his church through unknown tongues. 
So remember, three types of tongues. Edification of self to God and then the Holy Ghost praying through you. But the third type of tongues is God speaking to you and through you to his people. Can we say amen? At that moment, Jesus don't need a preacher. Can we say amen? He's pretty good at it. And once again, Isaiah 28, with stammering lips and an unknown tongue will he speak to his people. 1 Corinthians 14, for with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, is what God says. So here, as we close, the Apostle Paul dealing with the gift of tongues, he says, you know, it's wonderful that we all speak in tongues. He says stuff like this, I speak in tongues more than you all. And it sounds as if he's acting pompous here. He's not being braggadocious. He's trying to teach us. He he says, you know, wonderful that we're speaking in tongues. But that tongue, amen, to the the individual that does not know what that is and hears us speaking in tongues, he thinks we're nothing but barbarians, basically. Basically. So the Apostle Paul addresses the issue, and that is that God wants there to be an interpretation of tongues. Now, however, here's the problem. When we superimpose what the Apostle Paul is dealing with order in the church concerning tongues over the entirety of the church in speaking in tongues. Remember, there are three, basically, three types of speaking in tongues. The one that edifies you, connects you to God, amen, then the one that the Holy Ghost prays through you and the third is the spirit of God speaking through you to the church but then we say oh wait a minute the apostle Paul says that you know one is to speak in tongues at one time and then they were supposed to stop and another will interpret and all of that and here's the problem we take all three aspects of speaking in tongues and we cram them into one form Because the purpose that the Apostle Paul here is talking about is when God is trying to speak through an unknown tongue. Can we say amen? He's not covering the three other, the two others. I can boldly proclaim that. He's not covering the two other dimension of tongues. He's covering one dimension of tongues where God is trying to speak to his people and therefore the apostle is teaching us. He says when that begins to come forth, we all need to settle down and pay attention to what the spirit is saying and allow that tongue to come forth and then pray for or allow the interpretation to come forth. Don't muzzle what God wants to do in a worship service by saying, no, 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 you can't speak in tongues like that. No, 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 it, it's no, no. You're aligning two aspects of tongues into one that was the purpose of speaking to us. Can we say amen? And it becomes a, it, 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 it's, it's not just a distraction, it becomes a perversion of the word of God that derails people from their faith. So Sally is over here in the corner dealing with all kinds of mess and she's come to God to the altar and God's delivering her and God's strengthening her and she's speaking in tongues. Her spirit is being overwhelmed by the glorious presence of God. I'm not gonna go to her and say, hey, Sally, come on, you need to settle that down. There's supposed to be a word come out of those tongues. No, that tongue right there is for her edification and connectivity to God. Can we say amen? And let me assure you that when God begins to speak in tongues with the purpose of talking to his church, God has the ability of causing a neighing donkey to shut its neigh up when the tongue of the Lord comes forth to speak to his people. And if he can cause a neighing donkey to do that, he can cause me to shut up too. Can we say amen? Amen. And so when someone speaks in tongues in the form of personal edification, they are speaking in tongues unto God and unto and and not unto man. For no man can understand him for that he for him or her that is speaking in tongues. Can we say amen? Apostle Paul deals with this. So let me jump ahead here. 
as, as we prepare for God's Spirit to move in a powerful way. There are several points we need to know about tongues in this element of speak, God speaking through us through tongues. Number one, tongues that edifies God and the believer personally. Those three types of tongues that I mentioned. Keep that in mind again. I'm reiterating it. Tongues that edifies God and the believer personally. Where's that found? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 through 2. We're not going to read it tonight. We're going to save time. Can we say amen? amen? Amen. Second thing is tongues that the Lord uses to speak a specific message with a specific purpose to the church locally or globally. Isaiah 28, 11 through 12. We've already read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21. The third dimension of tongues is tongues that is used by the Spirit of God to pray through someone the specific will of God for the church, a people, and or a nation. Where is that found? I'm glad you asked. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 through 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. Can we say amen? That's a lot. I've given these notes to pastor. You're welcome to give them to the people, whatever you feel, brother, uh, in the Holy Ghost. So I know having said that, you're on the hook. Amen. But if they want it, amen, you are welcome to give it all these notes to him. But we're finishing in just a moment. Jude chapter 1, verse 20 through 21. We're going to read this. It says, Jude chapter 1, verse 20 through 21. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So here's that dimension. There is a speaking in tongues that is building you up and edifying you. Can we say amen? And as I close, that's the second time. I want to define interpretation and translation because we have a problem. Because when someone speaks in tongues or God is speaking through somebody in tongues, and we hear syllables that are, say, 25 syllables long, a word. And then when someone stands and says, thus saith the Lord, da-da-da, and only 10 syllables come out, we tend to judge that and say, that must not be from God because when they were speaking in tongues, it took a minute and a half. But when it was interpreted, it only took 10 seconds. The Bible did not say the translation of tongues. It said interpretation of tongues. And I think I'm, I'm pretty good at, about this, speaking Bangla and interpreting for people. There is a huge difference in interpretation and translation. So when somebody is speaking in tongues for a, a minute and a half or two minutes or three minutes and then someone gets up who has the gift to translate that or interpret that tongue and they just say, thus saith the Lord, God said to us tonight we are to fall on our face before God, repent and he will pour his blessings on us. But wait a minute, that only took about 15 seconds, but they spoke in tongues for two and a half minutes. Let's, let's get some practical help here as we close. Third time. Interpretation communicates the essence. Translation communicates exactly. Follow this. I'm going to say that again. Interpretation communicates the essence. What does that mean? What is God trying to say? That's interpretation. Amen. Interpretation is not focused on word for word. Translation is focused on word for word. Interpretation could take more or less time. Translation takes basically the same time because it is word for word. Jesus, God did not say in the Apostle Paul's writing that he gave us the gift of translation of tongues. That's word for word. But interpretation of tongues is interpreting the essence. Let's stand. Would you stand? So how is that important to the gifts of the Spirit? Because God has given this church. It is already a gift that is latent in the womb of this church. It's in your spirit. You have multiple times where God speaks in tongues, speaking a message to this church. Now, by the way, we don't worship gifts. We worship Jesus. We don't seek gifts. 
we seek Jesus. Now, wait a minute. The Apostle Paul said, covet the best gift. What's the best gift? The gift that is needed for the hour. Can we say amen? No, no, no. Prophecy is the best gift. Whatever. Amen. The gift, the, what's the best gift? If a man is laying in a hospital bed, dying of cancer, he does not need you to explain prophetically the 70 weeks of Daniel and how they relate to today. He needs you to operate in the gift of faith and the working of miracles. Can we say amen? So at that moment, the most important gift or the best gift is not prophecy. It's the gift of faith and the working of miracles, the gift of healing. Can we say amen? So the best gift is the gift that is needed for the moment. Don't get tripped up into power gifts and all of that. I want to have the prophetic gifts. Listen, you'll never have it if that's what you want because you're desiring it because of your own lust. And so let's get back to this. Here's the issue. Why is this little bit at the end so important? Because this church, this gift of the Spirit, speaking in other tongues, uh, uh, diverse tongues, is is uh, active in this church. But there are some that judge the interpretation compared to time frame that it took someone to speak it in tongues and for someone to interpret it. Remember, translation is word for word, but in interpretation is the essence. So don't get all messed up thinking, well, they didn't take as long as Sally was speaking in tongues. That must not be from God. The devil is a liar. We don't don't need to know word for word, uh, syllable upon syllable, what we need to know. Jesus, what are you saying to us? Tell us the essence, Lord. We want to be right. We want to make heaven our home. Can we say amen? Amen, amen, amen. And I'm saying this intentional. Do not complicate the ways of God. Yes, he is diverse. Yes, he is multifaceted. His ways are above our ways. Who can know his ways as he does? And yet he says, I will withhold no good gift from you. I will not keep you in the I'll not be shrouded. He was in the mystery of a shroud in the Old Testament as Jehovah but he comes out of the shroud in the New Testament as Jesus saying what was hid is no longer hid what was unreleased is now released what was inactive is now active in the church can we say amen I feel the Holy Ghost I tell you so here's what we're going to do. And I want you to take your time. I want you to take your time. I can tell you right now it is 821. Amen. You just take your time right here. Because this is what God said he would do. That there will be a demonstration of the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about show and tell. Okay? Everybody listen. I'm going to prophesy. That, no, 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 no. That's not what's going to happen. Amen, amen. But there's the Spirit of the Lord is going to fall upon us. Amen. And the gifts of the Spirit. Now, you got to ask for it. He will not give it by osmosis. He will not. Some say, well, i got to be under the spout where the Holy Ghost comes out. Wonderful. Praise the Lord for that. Can we say amen? Good luck with that too. Amen. Because the gifts of the Spirit have to be asked for. you got to pray for it. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't go quiet. You're still in an apostolic church. Can we say amen? you got to ask for it. No, I, 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 I don't know that I can get to the place where I could ask God to give a gift. Amen. It, 
You can. It's pretty easy. Jesus, your word says that there's nine gifts of the Spirit. I really don't know which one you want to give to me, but I love you so much, and I want to please you so much, Lord Jesus. I know I'm not worthy of any of these gifts, but you make me worthy through your blood and your name, and you put your spirit in me, Lord Jesus. Lord, I don't got no pedigree. I don't got no name. I'm a, I'm a nobody. I'm a this or that. But Lord Jesus, I am coming to you right now, and I am asking according to your will, not according to my desire, but I'm asking according to your will that you would give unto me every gift that you have purposed in your will to give unto me, to operate in, to give you glory and to give you praise in the name of Jesus. That wasn't hard, was it? And then what happens, we're going to worship and we're going to praise God. But what I want you to do is while you're praying that and while you're worshiping, we're not going to have music, we're not going to have songs. I want you to begin to, I want you to begin to open your spiritual ear. Literally say, I command my spiritual ears to open to the voice of God. And then as you're worshiping, And as you're praying, take a moment to listen. You cannot hear as long as your mouth is engaged. Our problem is, and I'm not going to preach this anymore. I'm not going to belabor this point. Our problem is we've perfected talking and we've lost the art of listening. And God's trying to chisel a word in sideways, and we're just. So here's it is apostolic to pray and speak in tongues and ask God for the gifts, but then take a moment and settle your spirit and say, I'm listening. And what you're going to want to listen to is not just an audible voice, but it's an impression. That's how it starts, brother. It starts as an impression. It starts, God understands that we deal in the realm of our feelings. So he puts a feeling inside of us. He begins with a feeling. It's not where he's going to leave you, but he begins with a feeling. Because we say, I feel. And so therefore God says, because you feel and you respond to what you feel, I'll give you a feeling. And it'll be an impression, a thought. And it'll cross the synapses of your mind while you're listening to the voice of God. And God will begin to, and I want to encourage you at that moment to grab it and say, Jesus, I'm listening. And the voice of God is going to begin to speak. Matter of fact, it's already speaking. So I want us right now to lift our hands. And I want you to understand, this is not one of those little prayers where we just pray for about two minutes and and then we get tired and we put our hands down. You want to walk around, you walk around, you do whatever you feel. Move yourself out of your seat, sit down, whatever you want to do. But stay in the vein of the Holy Ghost. Be asking God, God, give us gifts of the Spirit. And as God begins to move on you, maybe God gives you a word of knowledge. Maybe God says, so-and-so is dealing with this problem. Go to them, lay your hands on them, and begin to pray that situation through in the name of Jesus. Come on, can we do it right now? Lift your hands to the Lord. Jesus, you are not a man that you would lie. Lord Jesus, you have told me in the room and all throughout this day, God, that you would demonstrate the gifts. Come on, begin to voice. Open your mouth in the name of Jesus. You cannot pray this in your mind. This has to come out your mouth. Lord Jesus, Lord, you, you said that you, would demonstrate the gifts of your spirit, Lord. Shanda Roshaya Ionda. It's not the will of God that you would give gifts only to us preachers, Lord. It's not your will, Lord Jesus, that only a select few would be able to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And so, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to open the windows of Ionda Roshataya. 
He's standing at a window right now of heaven. He is beginning to open that window now. Jesus, open that window. I see you in the Holy Ghost, Lord. You are standing and you are opening a window of heaven. Open it, Lord Jesus. We loose the gifts of the Spirit in this place. I command every gift of the Holy Ghost that was planted in your people to become alive in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we purpose, Lord God, to give you glory with the gifts. Come on, begin to pray for the gifts right now. Begin to ask him, amen. You are not praying as a body. You are praying as an individual right now. But your individuality will be brought into unity of the body, amen. Come on, begin to pray individually for the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus, I am asking right now for every gift of the Spirit that that you have purpose to use me in, Lord Jesus. Do that today. Uh, give that gift in the name of Jesus. Come on right now. Come on, keep asking for the gifts. Amen, amen. Let's not be Pollyannish right now. This is in generic. We're not going through some sort of Pentecostal motion. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, loose the gifts of your spirit, Lord. Loose the gifts of your spirit upon your people, God. Come on, keep asking right now. Keep asking right now. It'd be a shame for two days of teaching uh, and the last day you'd have missed it. Hallelujah. God, I release the gift of, I release the word of wisdom, Lord Jesus. I release the word of knowledge. I release the discerning of spirits. I release the gift of faith. I release the gifts of healing. I release I release the gift of miracles. I release the diverse gift of diverse kinds of tongues. I release the interpretation of tongues. I release the gift of prophecy. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we loose all nine gifts of your spirit. Keep praying right here. Keep praying right here. God is speaking to you right now. You're feeling the Spirit of the Lord speak into your spirit. Obey the Holy Ghost right now. Obey the Holy Ghost right now. I command you to obey the Holy Ghost. I implore you to obey the Holy Ghost. Yanda, if God's given you a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, begin to activate that. Begin to say what he has spoken into you. Begin to vocalize it in the the name of Jesus. Shandara Roro Koto Roshataya. He under Roro Roshataya. Come on, the gift of prophecy. God is giving the gift of prophecy here right now in the name of Jesus. God is giving the gift of healing right now and the working of miracles, the gift of miracles right now, the gift of faith God is giving right now. Come on, somebody begin to prophetically pray right now. Begin to prophetically pray in the name of Jesus. You feel that right now? That's the spirit of the Lord moving. That's not your spirit. That's not flesh spirit. That's the spirit of the living God. Obey the Holy Ghost. Go to somebody. Lay your hands on them. If God has given you, or if you feel that he has given you the gift of healing, the gifts of healing, the gift of miracles, come on, begin to pray with somebody right now. Hallelujah. As you're praying, begin to listen to the voice. Begin to listen to the voice of God right now. Come on, open your ears. Pray, I open my ears to hear the voice of God. 
Jesus, we open our ears to hear in the Holy Ghost. Come on right now, open your ears. Open your spiritual ears. Don't close your ears right now. Open your spiritual ears right now. Don't stop, church. Amen. Don't stop. There's God's going to speak to us in just a moment. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe it. Amen. But open your spiritual ears right now. Command your spiritual ears to open. Now I want you to listen right now. Every mind focused on the Lord right now. Not a single movement in the flesh. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God. Stay in the spirit. Listen. What's he saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's keep listening. That's, that's, that's exactly, that's tremendous, great, perfect. Come on, keep listening to the voice of the Lord. Don't stop. What, what our brother did right now, that's exactly what God wants to happen right now, whether you know it or not. God's speaking into your spirit. Go ahead and say it. If you have a word from God, God put an impression in your spirit. Say that. I know it's unusual. We've not been trained to do this, but go ahead and say it. There's a thought, there's a feeling that God has put in your spirit. It's all right to proclaim that. Every mind focus on the Lord. Nobody judging Remember, the voice of God begins with a feeling. It's an inclination. It's a thought that he has put in your spirit. Nobody's judging anybody right now in the name of Jesus. God is allowing us to experiment with the gifts of the spirit, to test the waters. What is God speaking to your spirit? Anybody else? God's not done. Anybody else? Be bold. Don't hesitate. Be bold. Both of these words that have come forth are all centered on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. That's, this, is, this, is, this is what God wants to do. Amen. Amen. God's allowing this to happen right now. Amen. Amen. Because it's a safe zone. This is what I feel in the Holy Ghost. It's what I've been teaching. God is activating all the gifts of the Spirit. And he is arising an army that will not only fight with a sword in his hand, but he has also put a sickle in your other hand where you will go forth to war in the army and the fight of the Lord. Amen. But the battle belongs to the Lord. Therefore, he has placed a sickle also in the other hand that you would reap a harvest for it is harvest season in the kingdom of God and in the world. Can we say amen? 
That's what I feel strongly impressed of the Lord. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? We're, we're going to move on. I know this is unusual, but this is a training class. We're in a seminar right here. And so it's okay to test the waters. Hallelujah. We heard a word express that Jesus is coming in his majesty and power to that extent. It is a proclamation of his majesty and kingdom dominion. We heard of the power of God that would be with us. Can we say amen? Now what I want us to do is to begin to lift our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. All over the house of the Lord. Would you begin to worship? We're entertaining the voice of God. If God wants to speak to us in tongues, we are opening our spirit for him to do that. That's not a suggestion because I feel that the Lord is going to speak to us in that dimension. Come on, every heart, every eye, focus on the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I know we've never done this this way before. It seems as if it is almost manufactured, but it is not. God is teaching us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, speak in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I receive that as a word from the Lord. I receive that as a word from the Lord. Can I tell you why? If you're sick in your body, will you come right now to the altar? Come right now if you're sick in your body. Because what the Lord spoke to me in my room is he would demonstrate healing. Amen. He would do that. He would demonstrate that gift in the name of Jesus. If you're sick in your body, would you come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're seeing how easy it is for the gifts of the Spirit to operate in. And they're in order. If you're sick in in your body would you come in the name of Jesus hallelujah now I want those that are here I want you that if you believe that God has given you the gifts uh, 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 the gift of if God has given you the gift of faith and the gifts of healing would you come forward right now hallelujah hallelujah come on come forward right now hallelujah brother Shay you need to be up here in the name of Jesus I, I call you out specifically son because these gifts are upon you in the name of Jesus I want you all to begin to lay hands on this that are in the front right now God's going to heal them in the name of Jesus come on up brother Shay come on up would you begin to lay hands on people. Anybody else, if you feel the gift of faith, God's giving you the gift of faith, come on up. Amen. God's giving you, feel that God's giving you the gift of, of healing, gifts of healing. Begin to lay hands on people in the name of Jesus. I curse every disease in your body. In the name of Jesus, I speak faith into this body now. I command every pain in her body to leave her. Every sickness, every disease must leave her body now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you don't feel gifted in the gift of faith or the uh, gift uh, gifts of healing, you can come too. Amen. Just come on around. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to close with this and turn it over to pastor. Amen. But how about we just come to the altar and begin to lay hands on one another. Healing is taking place right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak to every malady of your body. 
I speak to every disease in your body. I speak to your joints. I command that arthritis to leave your body in the name of Jesus. I command that crippling arthritis to leave your body in the name of Jesus. I command every disease in your body to bow to the name of Jesus and leave your body. Now, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have healed many tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you that your power is greater than their disease in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, this is the moving of the Holy Ghost right now. Don't be in a hurry. Hallelujah. Lay hands on somebody. And you'll notice in this altar that as you lay hands on somebody, God will give you a word about their situation. If it's the will of God, go ahead and speak it to them. Go ahead and speak it to them. So you can say it like this, I feel this. This is what I feel from the Lord. And ask them, is it right? Hallelujah. Jesus, we glorify you. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we glorify you. Everybody's welcome at this altar. Everybody's welcome at this altar. Everybody is welcome at this altar. Hallelujah. Everybody is welcome at this altar. This ain't a club. This is the church. Everybody's welcome. As you continue to pray, continue to pray right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, come on, let's press right now in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. As you continue to pray, I ran this by Brother Corbin, but our pastors that are here, if this is an open pulpit for Brother Sansom. Brother Hughes, if you feel anything from God to speak to your congregation, this is open for you right now. You can come and have liberty to speak to your church and your congregation that is here. Hallelujah. Maybe you have a word for God, not just for one of your saints, but maybe for your church. Hallelujah. You can do it. Hallelujah. Let's pray right now. Yes, continue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ikala bohoto sikala la maha ikorona bohoto la la